Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to do part 10 of Flex Press with Adobe Flex. And I'm going to help you out a little bit here. If you've been following along, you can go to code.google.com forward slash p forward slash flex wordpress. And there we've included all the source code needed to continue with this project. So if you go to Project Home, you can see the different videos which show you how uh, to create Flex Press. But go to Downloads, and now we have included the new WordPress uh, MySQL database with the modified thumb underscore name column in it, and also the full project files. So the full Flex project files, the Flex My Thumbnail .zip is here, so unzip that, and it includes the thumbnail images as well. Get that installed on your computer. Follow the procedures that we've shown you in the past, and get this project up and running, and you can start right afresh where we're at now. So good luck, and let's complete the item renderer. So we've created a thumbnail image folder and put images in that and we need to refer to those images. So let's go ahead and do that right now by putting in the source tag of the image component. And I'm going to open this back up so we can look at it again. The folder is thumb images and we need to refer to the data items inside that thumb images which is image 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 which those are the same names that we have in our database. So let's go back and uh, open this up again. So in our source tag, we need to type in thumb images. That's the folder that contains the images, forward slash. And now we have a magical element in this HBox, which is called data. So each time the item renderer goes through the different objects in the array collection, it loads into the data that object. And so all we have to do is put in our curly brackets, since it's bindable, type in the name data, and refer to the actual node that we want the data element from, so that is thumb underscore name. Now when we run this, it should pull that data from the MySQL, which is the name of the image that we want, and populate the list box. Let's see indeed if it does. But before we do that, let's close this tag properly. We'll get rid of this closing tag here, and we'll just put in a forward slash so we can just use one element in this component. So now let's go ahead and now save this, make sure there's no errors don't see an error, so let's run this and see if we get our image. And here's our list box, and it does indeed contain our images. Now let's come along and put our text in this list box. Let's go back. And now we're going to work with the text element. I'll go ahead and just close it properly here, come along and put my forward slash here. Great. And I want to go ahead and once again just use that data item. So we'll go and create, uh, get some code hinting here, got our text here. And we're going to put our curly brackets in. Use that magical data item, which is populated from the item renderer each time it goes through a different element of the array collection. So data, and just use dot syntax to refer to the element of the XML that you're wanting to bring in. In this particular instance, it was post underscore title. Okay, let's run this and see if we get anything. And now, indeed, we are populating the uh, list box with an image and the title. Good. We can actually come along here and do a little bit of cosmetics. Let's go to design. Let's click on this, and we're going to bring up the flex properties view. And let's go ahead and just bold this element. And let's increase the, uh, the size. Bring it up to 14. Good. Now let's go back to source view. And I'm going to do something now that I used a label function for. I'm actually going to put the date in here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to add it in. So I'm going to put a uh, curly brackets. And let's type in data. Dot. We need to remind ourselves what the name was. If you recall, it was post underscore modified. There you go. And now let's run this and see what we get. Oh, so okay, so we are getting the list, the image, the title, and the date. And if you recall, when we used the labor function, we had that in parentheses. Let's put that in parentheses. 
So all I'm going to do is just put a parenthesis right here. And now let's run the program again. And there's my parenthesis. Now there's a little bit of work that needs to be done here. We know that. We only see the first 10 images because that's all we put in. There's more data items, so you don't see any images there. But what you're seeing here is without using the label function, but using the item renderer, I've got the same effect as bringing in more than one item into the list box. Isn't that pretty cool? And next time, we're going to show you how to build your own custom component uh, to bring all these in to the list box as a unit.